Uh, th thanks. It was it was a great opportunity to talk to her. First time uh, on camera since taking the job. I sat down with her with Kara Swisher, as you just mentioned. And specifically, some of the big, most more interesting elements of it uh, was, I think, her answer to this. I'd asked her about how her agency thinks about the services that are free from technology companies. Think Facebook, uh, for example. And then the role of data privacy on the other end and sort of how to weigh it. Especially in digital markets, there's a deep conversation right now, um, and one that also falls in the FTC's wheelhouse around data privacy and security, um, instances in which firms were able to renege on their commitments. And so, you know, entered the market or made certain acquisitions of firms that were a bit more privacy protective and then ended up reneging. And so all of a sudden, firms or consumers are locked in. Um, and suddenly have to surrender even more data or surrender to being tracked on a greater set of websites. And so I think those types of moments really underscore the, the, the point that in, in many instances, users are not exercising free choice and are not consenting to these practices, but really feel locked in or coerced. You've got to read through the lines a little bit with what she's saying, but I think it really does uh, suggest how she's thinking about some of the enforcement uh, that may take place under her watch. Meantime, the Biden administration has been arguing quite publicly that antitrust has played a key role in what they say is inflation. Um, and I asked Khan where she stands on this. On this question of, you know, the role of, of market power, I think there are a couple of instances in which we can imagine market power could play a contributing role, right? I think one that comes to mind is instances in which an inflationary environment can give cover to companies with market power, monopoly power to exploit that power, right? Mm -hmm. if, if prices are kind of rising around them, then they can either unilaterally or co in a coordinated way raise prices in ways that might not be as easily detectable. And that's just a pure exploitation of their monopoly power. I think another instance in which we might imagine seeing it is Mer certain types of mergers and acquisitions over the last few decades have left our supply chains much more brittle, right? Capacity has been thinned out. And as a result of that, the system as a whole might be less resilient so that when you have certain types of shocks, certain types of disruptions, be it natural disasters or a global pandemic, um, we're not able to respond as quickly. And that can lead to certain types of pricing increases, too. So... You know, it's, I think you can start to see how she's thinking about the world. And I think it, for business leaders who are watching earlier and may mm -hmm. want to get a replay of it, you can start to understand the kinds of enforcement approaches that they may take, which would be very different than historical administrations. Very different indeed. But she also talked about some of the challenges, right? She said repeatedly that they were under-resourced. They needed right. more money. And so I wonder, Andrew, sort of we asked this question at the beginning of the show, does this change the calculus for how big tech operates? You know, if Facebook or Meta was really interested in Activision Blizzard, but that didn't go ahead, we're already sort of seeing the effects. Does this change how perhaps tech giants or tech looks at M&A? Well, look, the, the truth is, I think if you were to be an Amazon or an Apple or a Google or, or whatnot, you probably could not have gone after an Activision and tried to buy it yourself. And I think you're actually in a bit of a box to go to Alina Khan and say, hey, over there, we have a problem with this. I think that's going to be a very interesting issue to see who raises their hand on that. But to the point of resources, and, and it's a bit like the IRS I think there's a lot of people who, unfortunately, take their chances with their taxes. I think there's going to be companies that are going to take their chances in Washington still, in part because, as Lena Khan said very uh, directly, she doesn't have the resources to go after everybody, uh, perhaps the way she would like to, to examine these, these transactions. And so they have to make choices. And some of those choices are going to be about the efficiency of being able to do it and create uh, a, a bit of a policy framework so people can look at that. So there's... I think it's going to be very interesting to see what she does next.